have, uh, I'm now at Ridgefield Crossings. In which war did you serve? I served in Korea. What was your branch of service? The U.S. Marine Corps. What was your highest rank? PFC, Private First Class. In what locations did you serve? The, uh, in the Korean Peninsula, I was activated from the uh, reserve which I had joined to avoid going to Europe as a uh, replacement troop. But then Korea jumped in and I was activated and sent directly to Korea. Uh, okay, the question here is, were you drafted or did you enlist? Well, I, I joined the Marine Corps Reserve when I was in high school, 1946 and uh, was activated in when the Korean War broke out uh, in June of 50, and I was brought in in October of 50. So I was one of the quick uh, replacements to be sent in to stem the tide after the <coughs> Chosin Reservoir debacle, and I was uh, deposited in Korea and joined the 1st Marine Division at Pohang, which is a uh, seaport on the, uh, on the uh, east coast of Korea. Where, where were you living at the time you enlisted? <coughs> I was living at home at Port Washington, uh, 12 Newellist Avenue, Port Washington, Long Island. And what year was that? And what day? Well, we're talking 1946 to 1952 is the time frame. And 1946 is a uh, reserve, Marine Corps Reserve sign up. And then the uh, active, I was activated after the Korean War broke out in June of 1950. How many years were you in? It's hard to say. Uh, the counting the Marine, counting the uh, reserve time, four years. And uh, actual in uniform service time, two years. Why did you pick the branch you joined? I figured that if I was going to have to be uh, involved in shooting, I'd want to have guys alongside of me that were a little more gung-ho than some of the uh, Army fellows I'd seen. So I was looking for the right companionship in case of combat. Tell me about your first days in the, in the service. When you first joined, you went to boot camp? When I was activated from civilian life, I, I, in 1950, I was at St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York. and. Uh, Do you remember your boot camp? I don't, I didn't have any boot camp. Are I you? was activated from the reserve. Okay. Okay. And did you have any training before you went to Korea? A little bit down in Camp Lejeune, Camp Lejeune some rifle work. Well, not much training. It was a uh, quick urgent time and they didn't have too much time for uh, training me. 
after you were activated, you went to Camp Lejeune. Yes. Then from Camp Lejeune, you went to where? Aboard the ship, the William O. Darby, and uh, that took you to Korea. It took me to Korea by way of Japan. I was uh, taken off the uh, troop ship at Jap on the on the way to Korea, and spent a week or ten days in Japan while paperwork was being cleared. Then I was shipped to Korea. Uh, what? Okay. What was your first assignment in the Marines when you were on active duty? It's difficult. Uh, the first. First action. No, when you uh, when you went to Japan and then you were sent to Korea. What it, were you a rifleman? Were you a I was, machine gun person? I was I was put in a machine gun platoon as an ammunition carrier and worked with a, a teammate pulling. Uh, carts that are filled with ammunition. So my first duty was as an ammunition carrier in the uh, weapons company of the 3rd Marine. Do, do you know which unit you were with, with you know, the um, platoon company battalion? you remember the name or? Yeah. Weapons Company is the first, third battalion, George Howe and Item, third battalion, fifth Marines, first Marine Division. And you went there as a replacement or as a, as a total unit? As an re individual replacement. Okay. And where was the replacement center? Pohang. Okay. And there they assigned you to that unit? That's correct. And were you in that unit for the whole time you were in Korea? Yes. Okay. In the same job? No, several different jobs. What other jobs did you have? I progressed to from ammunition carrier to squad leader <coughs> and remained that way until we were brought back off active duty in, uh, in June of 1951. How long were you in Korea? Five months, okay. February, March, April, May, June. Um, no, through through November, through the end of November. So, so it was a lot more than that. It was eleven months. Okay, so you um, you were activated in when? What month? In what year? Activated. In October 1951. And then you were sent to Korea, and you were in Korea from starting when? October 1950. I'm sorry. October 19. Let's see if we can straighten it out. I don't know. Okay, you you were you were activated into the Marine Active Marine Corps in October of. 50, 50 or 51? October of 1950. Okay. Then you went to Korea approximately, you said about February? February 1951. Okay. 
And then you did 11 months in Korea? Yes. Okay. And you were basically in the same unit the whole time? That's correct. Okay. Were you wounded when you were in Korea? I was not wounded. Okay. What was a typical day in the service there? What, and a typical day, what did you do? Well, when I first went to Korea, joined the... Uh, <clears throat> Would you like something to drink? Yeah, I think I could. When I f went from Japan to Korea in February of 51, we were it was a scramble. The, there were no main lines of resistance. There was no organized north versus south line. It was uh, all being contested on a guerrilla basis with... Uh, Did you... Um, so were you in trenches? Were you um, up on top of mountains? Uh, how did that work? For the first f four months, I lived in a ho in a foxhole and did not. I remember thinking, when I finally we finally got back off the line, <clears throat> that it was the first time I had opened and closed the door for five months. And that was the f February through, what, May. And then after that, you were, did you move around a lot or did you stay in the same general area? We moved incessantly up one mountain and down the next. The, the uh, it was a, it was a, uh, climb this hill and fire at the top of the next hill. Riflemen go underneath you, fire. And take the objective and you go on to the next hill. It was one hill after another, that's all it was. And, and uh, the only town that I remember seeing along the way was Pa Poang, which is where I came in. So we had been circling around in the mountains for four months. So when you were there, you saw combat, right? Yes, I did. And did you shoot the machine gun and shoot rifles and things like that? I shot my rifle. I did not shoot a machine gun. Okay. Uh, Which was an M1? No. A carbine. Okay. Did your unit have many casualties? Well, by my unit it would be uh, the weapons company that which means uh, heavy equipment, uh, 40 mil, 60 millimeter mortars, and the only thing is the heaviest machine gun was our water-cooled 30 caliber. Okay, but did you have many people that got hurt or killed in that particular unit?
from one battle to the next, there would be, we wouldn't have direct casualties in the machine gun platoon. Okay. That was a little bit behind the front line. Uh, Marines. Okay. In a, in a uh, firefight near the end of active duty, we had two fellows hit. Both of which were on a hill, on a knoll, and were held down by a sniper on the next hill, which is probably 350, 400 yards away, something like that. And uh, two fellows got hit. As a matter of fact, one of the fellows got hit, and he was standing between me and the rifleman, so it could have been me and not him. I don't know what happened to him. And the rifleman probably still playing cards, which is the way I knew him. Okay. Um, did you receive any medals or citations? I have a, a list of medals and citations is given on that. Uh, Right. DD-214. Right. They talk about three Korean service medals, bronze stars. Right. And also a presidential unit citation, I think? Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, they didn't make too much fuss over things like that when we were in Korea. Right. All that came together after we finished. Sure. Did you sustain any injuries while you were in Korea? No, I didn't. Oh, no, I did not. How about something like frostbite and things like that? Got cold a lot. What was the temperature like there? It felt like 150 below zero, but it was below zero. And you know, when you're in a, when you have a heavy machine gun that's in your care, you have to dig it in every night. Right. So digging in a, in a frozen mountainside was a lot of a lot of duty. How did you stay in touch with your family? Letters back and forth. When we uh, got back off the lines in June, May or June, we had some packages caught up with us. Okay. What type of food did you have? Sea rations. And how did you... They were cold, right? Well, until we, uh, if we were in an area where we could light a little fire, mm -hmm. warm it up, we did. Did you have enough supplies? Yes. Did you have, did you feel stress when you were up, up there in the, uh, in the front? When I feel stressed is when bullets came and kicked up dirt and I didn't think I could get down below the line of fire. I thought I would not make it. Okay. And, uh, okay. But, but apparently there was just enough distance 
so that I was let go. And when you were there, were you fighting the Koreans or the Chinese? It, we never could know. <clears throat> there was one occasion where we were uh, coming to the end of the uh, act in, act, active duty, probably in April or May. And we, in our advance from one perimeter to another, we passed a, uh, an army outfit that said, fellas, they, they don't ever stop coming. You better, you know, get, get out of here. And so our, our people set up a perimeter and that night there was a pretty good, pretty good sized firefight. And in the morning, for whatever reason, I'll never know, as a Chinese or South or North Korean company of men marching to abreast, came marching around to Noel in front of us and below us. And we had all our machine guns up on the perimeter and we waited until they got around the corner. And then the first gun down at the left opened fire and then we decimated them. That was the most firing I witnessed in Korea. Did you take any prisoners? No prisoners. No prisoners. No, as a matter of fact, uh, the lieutenant of one of the companies went out and uh, used his 45 to finish off a couple of the enemy that were still moving. Okay. Uh, when you were in Korea, did you have any sort of good luck charm or anything like that? You know, I, I never did. Okay. How did people entertain themselves? Play cards? Anything like that? Cards and dice, those are the two things. Okay. Did you see any USO shows? Yes. Uh, I think it was Bob Hope. You saw Bob Hope? I think it was. Now, why should I have trouble remembering that? You didn't see Marilyn Monroe, did you? No. Okay. Uh, did you go on leave when you were in Korea? No, once I went into the weapons company, I was, I was there for the duration. Okay. Were there any particularly um, humorous events while you were there? Well, there was one event that I don't even know if I should talk about. It has to do with uh, the treatment of our men after they had been captured. At the time we were there, one of the lieutenants was careful to say that he didn't want anybody talking about what they saw. As far as captured Americans are concerned? Yes. Okay. Let's put it this way. They were all dead. There were no prisoners. 
What did you think of your officers and fellow servicemen? Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty good guys, I'd say. Did you keep a journal? No, I did not keep a journal. Okay. So you were in Korea for 11 months. When you got out of Korea, where did you end up going? San Diego <coughs> Marine Corps base. And did, how long did you stay there? Just to muster out. Okay. And do you remember the day you were discharged? Just before Christmas. Okay. And what was your homecoming like? It was very joyful. My brother, Babe Bernard, was over in Korea and we passed one another. I was coming home and he was going out. He was in the, he's in the tank car. So my homecoming was uh, joyous. It wasn't complete because of his being still in Korea. And what did you do after you got out? Let me ask you a question. You, you got out of Korea, you were mustered out of the Marine Corps. That was the end of your service? That's correct. Okay, so after you got out of the service, what did you do? I got a job down at uh, Lewis Coal and Oil, working on oil burners. Okay. Did you go back to school afterwards? I did not. I did not. Uh, that was a, a, a sad mistake. But uh, I was lucky enough to make up largely, make up for it in, in the work that I did. Okay, so you never used the GI Bill, right? Never do you never used the GI Bill. Uh, did you have any close friendships in the service? A half dozen fellows, and uh, nobody from. Port Washington was was there at the time, so I didn't have any any local contacts. Just Did buddies that you go out and have a have a beer with, and one fellow communicated for a few years. Name is Dunkakis. Dunkakis? Yeah. Okay. Very close. Uh, so um, you didn't continue any of those relationships beyond that time frame? No. Did you go to any sort of um, reunions? Reunions? Yeah. Never. Never? Never. After you got out of the service, what did you do as a career? I went to work with uh, a gentleman in uh, Port Washington whom I had uh, known growing up. He was forming a company, he did form a company, to advise and consult retailers on how to handle products made of the new man-made fibers, Orlon and Dacron, Acrolan and things like that. And Robert Shook Associates was the name of the company. And Dr. Shook was uh, the head of it. 
I did a lot of uh, selling and traveling with that group. But 1953, that was uh, not a good year to start a business. It was very, very bad. And we went under in 53. And what did, what did you do after that? I mean, basically, in your life, what types of jobs have you done? Well, As part of the, my part of my duties with Robert Shook Associates, I came across, I came into contact with quite a few people in the man-made fibers industry. One of which was a gentleman from Dupont Company in Wilmington, who recommended me for a position with Dupont, and. Of course, I'm skipping over a very important part. I got married in December. December of December what? 27th, 1951. No, 52. Yeah. So a blur. What was your wife's name? Carol. Okay, so you worked for DuPont for a number of years. Three years. And uh, then I was uh, hired to come to New York to work with Stanley Hunt and his uh, Textile Economics Bureau, trading on the experience with the DuPont Company. Okay. How did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? Well, I don't want to be too critical, but uh, I was moved through pretty fast. <clears throat> when you asked, did I ever shoot a machine gun? In Camp Lejeune, yes, but... Okay, what, what I'm asking you is how did your military experience affect your life and the way you think about the military? I think the military is an impossible organization. And the uh, methods they have of uh, what do I want to say? First of all, anybody that's been as close as I was to uh, biting the bullet would never want to go back again to the front lines. At least I wouldn't. As so much happens, so much confusion, okay. uh, certainly I'd be against any war, I think war is absolutely useless. Did your service affect your life? Um Positively in any way? I don't 
Sounds like you're not any direct. Gonna to finish off my business career. Uh, I was recruited by uh, Owens Corning Fiberglass. to work on product development and market development with a, uh, a new fiber that they had developed called Beta. Just a funny, the finer diameter fiberglass. And why I uh, took the job, I'll never know because I knew the opportunity for that kind of product was so limited and uh, would, co would always be subject to uh, health and uh, life risks. So, in any case, After Owens Corning, work with Jack Werner and in Werner Management Consultants, and was hired out of there by ITT Rayonier to promote their uh, Rayon products. was uh, picked from a group of uh, men to be uh, senior vice president of uh, wood pulp sales for ICT Ray and Air. And that's where I spent my last eight years. The name of the company was what? The name of the company was what? Where you were the last eight years? ITT uh, Ryanair. Okay. R A Y O N I E R. What did they make? They uh, own timberlands and you cut the trees and okay. cook them up and sell it as wood pulp. Okay. Um, is there anything you would like to add that was not covered in this interview? So. Okay. I would like to thank you for your service and taking your time to be interviewed today.